Hey, what's up? As you can see, the Diaboromon supply set came in finally, and I want to take this opportunity to talk a bit about Diaboromon. I think the deck is actually pretty competent right now, and I've been playing it for a while, actually. I started playing it late in BT9, and it's been surprisingly competent this entire time, mostly due to a lot of generic options you can run. I mean, like, generic cards, not option cards specifically. Um, but yeah, before we get into the deck, they come, this, this came with tokens, and they're pretty nice, but unfortunately, they are just common, they're not foil or anything. Um, I have my expectations a little too high, I guess, because of Yu-Gi-Oh! And then you also have, of course, the alt art, Armageddon Mon, which is just the same art as on the mat, but it has pretty nice foiling. We are running two copies of this, that's why there's only two here, they give you four total. Uh, but aside from that, yeah, you can print out tokens, and I believe there was, like, some prizing in 2022 where you could have gotten them. Or maybe it was 2020. I, I don't remember. Um, I kind of hope they do something where we can get more tokens officially in the future, and hopefully maybe some of them are foil or something. I, I just like collecting stuff like that. It's not specifically because of this. Uh, but yeah, so getting into the actual deck list, uh, I, I guess... I'll do this after, but we'll talk about a couple of other tech options you can run and a couple of different ways you can build the deck as well. So right now I'm running four copies of the BT5 Sumimon, which is just, you know, when attacking, draw one if this Digimon has the unidentified trait. It's just nice to have. Sometimes you'll swing early just to get stuff in trash for Arata. So that's pretty good. Um, you also could run the DP egg, which I think is nice. A lot of Digimon in our current format cap out at 12k specifically. So being able to pump yourself up to 13 to swing over stuff is really, really nice. Um, especially because you kind of need to be able to maintain tokens on board to deal with higher and higher cost things. So being able to do that, uh, or like being able to get rid of things without necessarily needing to meet the threshold with tokens and Diabormon bodies is kind of cool. Um, I'm testing out running five eggs right now, but do whatever you think fits. Uh, for me, it's not that big of a deal because I'm not running Analog Youth, but if you are running Analog Youth, I think it's necessary to run five eggs. Otherwise, you'll just kind of run out really early. At least sometimes. Uh, for the level 3s, you're running two Takurimon. You need it kind of for the Royal Knights matchups. Uh, Blue Flare, Cross Heart. It has helped me in Galacticmon as well because the new promo is a Digicross card. And I mean, even in the BT17 reveals, there was a uh, there was something that they gave Digicross to the other day. I'm just blanking on it. I'll probably toss it on the screen. Uh, but aside from that, we're running four copies of the BT2. And BT5 Karamon. The BT2 one just has a mandatory draw effect when you play a Digimon with the same name. Uh, so sometimes you'll want to get rid of this so you're not decking yourself out or risking it. And the BT5 one is just a really good searcher. It checks top 5, adds an unidentified Digimon, and then also adds an errata if you see one. Really good filter. For the level 4s, we're on 11 of them. 4 of the BT2 Kurosarimon, 4 of the BT5 Kurosarimon and three of the promo 45. So this one, memory gain effect, gives rush to the tokens, and this one gives all your Diabormon, uh, or all your same name Digimon rather, decoy black slash white. Uh, all of these are really, really good, so I think they're worth running. It's just, you kind of mainly want to get access to these two, because this will make your Digivolutions cheaper, and being able to swing immediately with a token that is spawned off of your ace is kind of nice. This card is also really, really good. I would run it at four copies, but I just don't have the space for it currently. So that's our threes and fours. Then for our level fives, we're on four copies of the BT5 Inframon and three copies of Chimeramon. You could run four of this. I just only own three. So... Let's talk about the Inframon first. It has an on deletion that will spawn a token. So sometimes if you need to get rid of your own Diabormon body, it's really nice for that. But the other thing it does is if you have a Karamon out, right? So let's say we just, you know, played this down and it lived. For a cost of four, you can warp to this. And that four cost can be reduced by the defense training card. 
So it's pretty nice. It threatens a Dioboromon A's Digivolution very early on, and your opponent just has to deal with it. A lot of the time, this tempo swing is like definitely something that you need earlier on in the game. Uh, sometimes you can just end up snowballing from this. Uh, but yeah, like just just a nice flexible card. You also could run the where did I put it? The BT2 Inframon, you could digivolve into this into the in the back, right? And then when you move out and you digivolve into your Diaboromon, this will reduce the cost by one. So if you digivolve into Ace, it'll spawn a token. And then if you have Arata, that'll spawn another token. So if you have the memory gain Kurisarimon under it, you'll basically evolve for free. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Chimera is here because there are some situations where you'll have access to two level fours, like maybe one of your three survived and you have one in the back already. So like, let's say you have, I don't know, these two, right? This is on board. This is in raising. Um, and it's been digivolved into the memory game. Kurisarimon, right? So on your turn, you can digivolve to the Rush Kurisarimon. It'll play an errata. Or, sorry, I made a mistake. You move this out, right? Then you digivolve to this. You play the errata, and now you can digivolve into Chimeramon for free by stacking them. And then you can digivolve that into your Diaboromon. You tap this. You spawn two tokens. You gain two memory. And they both have rush. Right? And the added bonus here is if you do have the third Kurisarimon in the trash, the Chimeramon shoves that on Digivolution. So you can just get a stack that has everything you need. I think having that particular bit of utility, especially for longer games, is really, really nice. It can allow you to swing the game back in your favor. So I like having access to it. I'm considering picking up another uh, Chimera Mon, but yeah, we'll see what happens. As for our sixes... We're on two copies of the EX1 Diaboromon. It gives all of your Diaboromon blocker. Um, the Diaboromon that's in, I think, EX6 actually does that as well. Well, all of your other Diaboromon blocking, blocker and jamming. Um, but for now, we have to run this. Unfortunately, it's a white card, which is a little annoying. I mean, Chimera's, Chimeramon's a white card, which is something that you have to be concerned about. But... Um, not being able to find this off of your memory boost really, really sucks. Whiffing Chimera is much more reasonable. <laughs> and then, of course, I'm running four copies of Diaboromon Ace. It's just a good card. Um, you digivolve into it, it makes a token, it can immediately pop something that's seven cost. Um, and if, via whatever means, you had tokens on board already... Hey, it, it scales upward if you have it paired with this. Uh, and the decoy, not only do you have blocker, but you have decoy. You have extra removal. Like, I don't know. Th th this deck has a decent bit of control. Um, and I'm also running two copies of Armageddon. I'm re the reason I'm doing this is because there are a few annoying level 7s that you have to deal with right now. Uh, the main ones would be Ruin Mode, Quartz... And, um, why am I blanking on the last one? Death X. So, like, sometimes people will just digivolve into the Death X rather than playing it. And this is really nice for those situations. Uh, but... Aside from that, it's also a 15k body. It's come up a couple of times as a way to remove something that I otherwise couldn't remove or needed to crash into... Uh, sometimes popping my own Diaboromon stack will spawn me an extra token. And, like, I'll have two stacks out, so if that token gets rushed and this has rush, that can potentially let me go for game. 
Uh, and also opponents checking this insecurity has been kind of helpful. It's not the main reason, but it's an extra boon. Uh, then for the rest of our cards, I'm running three Black Memory Boost, three Catastrophe Cannon, four Arata, and two Izzy. Uh, realistically speaking, you could probably cut Izzy, uh, but I just don't want to do that until I have the training boost. I'll probably do something like, you know, running the four boosts and swapping this back to a Catastrophe Cannon. Um, overall... I don't know why I said boost, but yeah, I'll have the four trainings, and then I'll swap that back to a Catastrophe Cannon. Um, being able to go to four memory between Izzy and Arata is really, really nice, and sometimes you'll check this insecurity, you'll gain a memory, and it'll set itself, which sometimes will end the opponent's turn, so it's just good to have. Uh, Catastrophe Cannon is cool, too, because it's, it's a nice offensive tool to help you get rid of something, because you basically pay three to digi digivolve to one of your opponent's digimon because it also will play a token as long as you have a diaboramon out um so you know in conjunction with the kurosari mon that gains memory this is basically three cost and then sometimes immediately that'll just be enough to delete an opponent's digimon in conjunction with your diaboramon ace right this card is really crazy out of security too so that, that's another reason that i would really like to play four of this but you gotta make concessions somewhere. Yeah, like, I've had a decent run with the deck. It's always performed better than I ever expected it to. I, I thought it would kind of crumble because, you know, I'm running BT5 cards, BT2 cards, and BT9, and BT10, and onward. And the foundation the deck has is actually solid. You mostly just needed to acclimate to what was going on in a particular format. Like playing against BWG was most, it felt like mostly a knowledge check. Like, do you know when to push out, how to develop your board and stuff like that? Like, don't get me wrong. Black or Grey by far was the strongest deck in that format, but this actually had a surprisingly okay time into it. It felt like a 50-50 uh honestly maybe even 60 40 at times the biggest issue that i think you had was what was the opponent's top end like black or gray mom popping your tamer isn't too big of a di an issue in and of itself it sucks but you can play around that right you can sequence so that you get your errata when you need it but what was a big issue is getting devolved by gaio and then getting swung into <laughs> So, you know, are getting devolved by the uh, BT-8 Metal Greymon. So, like, you had to be careful. And sometimes that actually made using Catastrophe Cannon a little bit worse. Uh, yeah, like, I, I really enjoyed that matchup, actually. It felt very, like, skill-intensive. But looking at some alternative options, like, just looking at the Diobormon cards, uh, the EX-1 Kurosarimon can allow you to unsuspend, which, like, it's fine. It's not bad. Uh, it's not super crazy, be, be, but it requires one of your other Digimon to get deleted with the same name. Uh, so I don't really like want to kind of go out of my way to try and use this. Like sometimes this will come up and it'll be nice. Maybe you can reboot your uh, Diabormon on the opponent's turn, effectively preventing them from trying to swing at it again or something like that. But I haven't found a lot of like really good use cases for this. We already talked about the BT2 Inframon because it can make it much cheaper, well, effectively cheaper, to go into your Diaboromons. Um, then we have the EX1 Inframon. This one, I think, maybe has the greatest value because you can establish this on board. If your opponent digivolves to level 5 while like it's in the battle area, you'll gain a memory, or they'll lose a memory, rather. Well, no, 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 it says we gain a memory. So yeah, we'll gain a memory. Um, but the other thing that's nice is all of your other Digimon with the same name gain plus 2k DP. So this would make your tokens 5k. And if you have two of these in rotation, that would put you out of Crimson Blaze range under most circumstances, which is nice. But just right now, uh, I really prefer running chimera mon so i'm just not on this but i mean you could run this alongside chimera potentially uh previously i was running this at four copies because it spawns a token on digivolution it doesn't it literally doesn't do anything else um 
Again, it's unfortunate because this card being white meant that your memory boosts could not search it. And that was probably the main thing that led to some amount of inconsistency. And I guess they were just trying to, you know, play with colors early on. I, I don't really know, but uh, this was okay. I'm glad that we have a kind of direct upgrade, not only in the Ace, but also in the EX6 version of the Abora model. Um, but yeah, this is just another way to kind of consistently get tokens, so it's an option. You don't need to run it, but it's there. You also could run the promo. Uh, the promo gains security attack based on the number of tokens you have out, and you can try to OTK your opponent with it. I don't, I don't think that's super duper necessary right now, but it's a card you can run. And there's also one other one. It's like in my binder behind me, so give me a sec. Uh, yeah, the BT2 Diaboromon. This one has the when attacking spawn a token, and it also just has inherent protection where, like, if it would be deleted, you could delete something, um, one of your other Diaboromons, right, to prevent it. It's okay. It's not great. I, I really prefer the security, uh, Diaboromon from EX1. It's just, because it's not black, I do not feel comfortable running more than two copies of it. And it also just is like a nice bonus. If they check it in security while you have the ace out sometimes, that'll just result in their Digimon being deleted. Pretty cool. Um, aside from that, though... Oh, sorry about the glare. <laughs> um, we have the BT6, I think. Yeah, BT6 Chikurimon. This is just a security Digimon. I've seen some people run it in a couple of other different builds. Like, I've seen a D-Brigade build that was using this as a way to, like, further control the game. Um, in conjunction with the DC G-Bomb, I believe. I hope I'm saying the name correctly. Uh, other stuff you can run would be the hybrids from BT12. The exact ratio you run is uh, usually going to vary, but Mercurymon gives one of your Digimon blocker. And Sephirothmon um, gives one of your opponent's Digimon the start of a uh, main phase effect where they have to attack, so you could more easily trigger the Inframon, I mean, not the Inframon, to trigger the Diaboromon Ace Digivolution. Um, but yeah, if you already had, like, the Inframon established, or you could go into this without passing turn, but then pass turn with the Inframon Warp, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, as for removal, you have DG Dimension, Iron Fisted Onslaught, uh, there's another card from the Jessmon starter deck that I believe just pops the highest cost or something that's 13 or higher. I forget exactly how it works. And then you also have Ultimate Flare. Ultimate Flare is like fine. I don't think it's like super amazing right now specifically. Uh, it can help into something like D Brigade. But again, I would much rather just be able to activate the Catastrophe Cannon for four potentially gain back three D Digivolve and then maybe just pop the body there because it should be lacking the protection. Um, but yeah, each of these are fair options. DG Dimension is probably the best of these three. It can be played for seven. It D Digivolves one, three different Digimon, and then it can pop um, three of your opponent's Digimon with play costs of six or less. Like, this card's really, really good. I'm just not sure it's necessary at the present moment. Um, and then for different builds, you may want to run something like Mamemon or Wisemon. I mean, you can even run Mamemon in this build because it's another way to play out an extra copy of Arata because the, uh, the BT5 Kurosarimon only plays him if you don't have another copy of him out. And it's also a way to give yourself blocker. So that's pretty cool. Wisemon has the blocker inheritable, but it also searches. You can use it, just play it down, and be good. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, 
neither of these cards has the unidentified trait, so you would have to hard draw into them or get them off of a training card or a memory boost. Uh, but yeah, the potential utility they provide is really, really nice. You can actually do like a completely toolbox variant of just focusing on the Aboromon Ace, still running Arata, maybe running a couple of other black utility cards. And then uh, Congo is also a tool you can run. Um, we have the BT-13 Gotsumon as a searcher. It's a blocker, and on deletion, if it's the opponent's turn, check top three, add a black card to your hand. Uh, oh, and then the last thing would be Laplace Demon. This is another way to just force your opponent to attack. You could run this in this build, actually, just to, uh, you know, forcibly trigger the Dioboromon Ace interaction. But, yeah, just figure out what works for you. Now, moving on to the future... I figured coming over the Digimon card that dev would be the better thing to do, so here we are. Uh, the Diaboromon on the left alongside Clock of the End were a part of the original wave of BT-17 reveals, that little teaser they gave us, so we won't have these for a hot minute, but we'll talk about them. Uh, but the Karamon to Diaboromon line on the right is from EX6. So the Karamon is another searcher. You reveal the top three cards of your deck instead of the top five, add one tamer or option card with Diaboromon in its text, and one card with the unidentified trait among them to the hand. Okay, that's pretty good, right? Uh, and then it has the same on deletion as the BT5 Inframon that spawns the Diaboromon token on deletion. Then Kurisairamon. Uh, when this card would be played from the hand by deleting one of your Digimon with the unidentified trait, reduce the play cost by three. So this is nice because like in a longer game, you could use a token to play this. And this is actually a way to trigger that other Kurosarimon inheritable one that unsuspends. So that's interesting. But then on play when evolving, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with a play cost of three or less. And again, like the Karamon, it has that on deletion of spawning a Diaboromon token. Then, Inframon. On play, when Digivolving. By deleting one of your Digimon with Diaboromon in its name, this Digimon may Digivolve into Diaboromon in your hand without paying the cost. So you can delete a token for this. And then it has the Inheritable all turns, once per turn. When one of your other Digimon with Diaboromon in its name is played, Digivolve one of your opponent's Digimon. Well, Digivolve one, one of your opponent's Digimon. Uh, this is really, really good. It kind of operates on a similar axis to... Catastrophe Cannon, right? But it's, it's really, really cool because if you are sitting on this on board, your opponent has to deal with the threat of not only can you blast Evo, but if you blast Evo, it's going to devolve them and potentially make it easier for you to delete their body. Uh, do bear in mind, there are a number of level fives that cost eight, but because we're getting better choke token generation overall, it's very possible you might be able to pop something that costs up to nine, which is going to put your opponents in a much higher risk zone at baseline. Uh, um, this is a very welcome addition because the weakest part of the Diaboromon strategy thus far has been the level fives. That's actually part of the reason why I'm running Chimeramon. So, you know, having something in theme that synergizes very well and gives you greater board control capability is cool. And it also has that thematic fitting um, of de devolution, the de degradation, I, I guess, that happened in the movie. And then we have the new Diaboromon. So this thing is just a straight-up upgrade to both the BT-5 and EX-1 Diaboromon, uh, unless you care about the security effect, I guess. So it says, start your main phase, and when digivolving, you may play one Diaboromon token without paying the cost. It's a you may effect, so you don't have to do it. If there's any reason that this would be problematic for you, you don't need to do it. That, that's good. That's good. Um, then all turns once per turn, when an opponent's Digimon is played, you may activate one of this Digimon's when Digivolving effects. So you can still generate more tokens on the opponent's turn, and pairing this with your Diaboromon Ace, right, means that you can still consistently pop things on the opponent's turn if they're not being careful about how they're playing into you. It also has all turns. All of your other Digimon with Diaboromon in his name gain jamming and blocker. This is really, really nice, again, because... This um, means your tokens will have an easier time surviving, which means, hey, you can more consistently play this later in the game for cheap, right? Pop a card, 
using a suspended token. And then on top of that, your Diaboromon Ace actually can swing into security pretty safely without needing to worry about its DP too much. All in all, pretty good. Um, I'm really excited to use these cards, and honestly, this is the only one I'm not sure how many copies I'm going to run. Like, I'm probably going to stick to running 11 um, Kurosari Mons. I just don't know how I'm going to adjust the ratio, because I'm probably going to keep three of the decoy one. So one of them is going to have to be at two copies. It's going to be like two, three, 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 right? Uh, but yeah, real good card. And <laughs> I really want to keep running Chimera Mon, but I really like the idea of actually being able to play a very solid mono black Diaboromon as well. Maybe I'll just make a couple of different builds. Um, but yeah, because this card's amazing. This card's wonderful. I also really like Clock of the End. So Clock of the End, it plays a Diaboromon token without paying the cost for three. And then place this card as the bottom Digivolution card of one of your Diaboromon without Clock of the End in its Digivolution cards. And this matters because it has an inherited effect. All turns when this Digimon would leave the battle area by an opponent's effect by deleting one of your other Diaboromon prevent it from leaving. So this is the protection from like bounce and spin effects, right? Which is just really, really good. That, that's just nice to have. Because uh, we're already protected from deletion to some degree with the decoys. So, hey, good stuff. And then at the end of opponent's turn, place one clock at the end from this Digimon's Digivolution cards in the battle area. Um... It's, it's very necessary that this is the case, I suppose, because uh, you have this start of your turn effect. If four clock of the end are placed in your battle area, you win the game. I don't think this is a, like, win con that you're really going to go for. Like, it's an extra thing that you're probably going to be running in the deck. Your opponent has to be concerned about it. Um, but you're mainly, in my opinion, going to be running it because it has that really nice defensive inheritable. It's three cost. It gives you a token and it gives you protection. That like, what else could you ask for? And then you have the BT seventeen Diaboromon. So this card is only a rare. I hope it will still have an alt art. Um, I mean, I really like this art, but you know, we do be collecting. So it says here, when Digivolving, by placing one clock at the end from your hand or trash as this Digimon's bottom Digivolution card, you may play two Diaboromon tokens without paying their cost. So this is relevant because if you don't have a Diaboromon on board uh, at the time you use this, this will just go to the trash. Uh, in addition, the tokens cannot have Digivolution cards, I believe. So yeah, uh, you shouldn't be able to shove this under them. The other effect is opponent's turn. When one of your opponent's Digimon attacks, you may switch the attack target to one of your Di Digimon with Diaboromon in its name. So this serves a similar purpose as this, just giving them blocker. Um, I'm honestly wondering if I'm going to end up with a build where I'm running like 7 level 6s. So I can run a combination of both of these while also having ace, like maybe 2 and 2 and then 3 ace. Or maybe I'll just run 8 and be like 2, 2, 3 ace. Uh, really interesting. It also digivolves for 4 because it's 12 KDP. But yeah, like, I, th I think these cards are solid at baseline. We're still going through the BT-17 reveal, so who's to say what else we're going to see? Hopefully we'll see another Arata Tamer, right? Just to make getting into Arata a little bit more consistent. Um, and yeah, as usual, the archetypical tamers tend to do something really, really good i'm also looking forward to this set because of aosmon so i might like do a video on that a little bit later uh, but yeah looking forward to these really excited and i hope if any of you want to play diaboromon that this is a bit of an incentive to do so like the cards not so much this video <laughs> but yeah y'all have a nice day